you know, I say this to a lot of people in America that some of the hardest workers I know are first generation Americans because they appreciate all the opportunity they have here. Knowing a little bit about your story, your story certainly is filled with overcoming adversity, traveling around, trying to find your way in different countries. Obviously, you've taken advantage of every single opportunity that's come your way from education to work to now your fight career. And now you're obviously presented with the biggest opportunity you've ever had in fighting. You've got a track record of surprising people and taking advantage of those opportunities. Yeah, absolutely. And not only did I take advantage of all those opportunities, I have created those opportunities for myself. You know, um, I got the education, you know, I had to pay for it. So, you know, I, I worked my ass off while in school already. You know, I washed dishes, uh, I worked the weekends, I worked nights, so I would be able to pay for my education. Uh, then I had to work, you know, all the way in college. The same in MMA, you know. How did I become Conor McGregor's sparring partner? People often say that, but do you see anybody else that's his sparring partner? No, there's only me. Because guess what? You know, what you see on TV, him knocking guys out, well, that's that's exactly how it is. You know, it's not easy sparring Conor McGregor. And what happened was he always wanted to spar, and not many people put their hands up. More often than not, no one put their hands up. But I was always there, day after day, no matter how sore I was, no matter how badly I got hurt, I came back for more, more and more and more. And eventually, there was no one else left. There was just me. So when Conor needed somebody to go corner him, when he needed somebody to go warm him up, there was no one else left. There was just me. I was the only one that survived because I was the toughest. Uh, I wanted it more than anyone else wanted it. Uh, and this is why I'm here now. This is why this opportunity is in front of me. Uh, and again, you know, getting the main event, you know, a lot of people said it like, oh, why did he get the main event? Well, guess what? You know, I always show up. When you book Artem Love of the fight, you know he's going to be there. All the promotion that we do, you know, it's not just going to go to waste. I will be there. My word is like a diamond. It's unbreakable. If I say I'm going to be there, I will be there. If I'm not there, I'm dead. The biggest names in combat sports go toe to toe with Brian Stan. Well, well, here's the thing. At the start of um, you know you, you talking about this here, you kind of said you gave Anthony Johnson too much credit. You didn't give him too much credit. He gets all the credit that he deserves. Um, and he went out there and he looked great. He had some good moments. He took DC down. He landed some really, really heavy shots. Um, but it was it, it 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 was a tactical meltdown. Listen, if you're fighting Daniel Cormier, who is, as everybody knows, one of the best wrestlers in the UFC, in mixed martial arts, on planet Earth, you do not say, hey, everyone, I'm fighting this wrestler. You know what my game plan's going to be? I'm going to go out there and out-wrestle him. That's just stupid. I love Anthony Johnson. Huge fan. Love the way he fights. Dude, if that was his game plan, then that was just ridiculous. And his team um, needs to have a word with themselves. Um Rumble is an incredible fighter. On the feet, he's one of the best out there, one of the most devastating strikers. I do not understand why he would close the distance and try and get the takedown. Rumble does have a, a wrestling background, not as credited as Daniel Cormier, but he's a big, strong, powerful dude. Anytime you close the distance and you start clinching, if you get the takedown, that's great. But if you don't, you allow the other wrestler to turn the tables because you're in that clinch world. You're in the wrestling world. You've closed the distance and you've got your hands on each other. You're going to lose those battles against a guy like DC. And having fought him once before, having felt that, having been taken down and not be able to get back to his feet and then submitted, you would have thought that he would avoid the clinch like the plague. Yeah. That's what he should have done. Avoid it like the plague. Stay on the outside. Use the reach. Use the range. Use the power, the kicks, everything, and stay away. It, it was a brain fart. It was a bad game plan. He made a mistake. He was meant to pay for it. Um, the thing with DC is, I mean, he's a, he's a big, heavy dude. If you look at him, he's not the tallest guy, certainly for a light heavyweight. He's not the tallest. He's very short and compact. And when a guy that knows how to use his weight, because wrestlers know how to make themselves heavy. Uh, you know, it's years and years of technique training. They know how to make themselves heavy. And then when you've got that kind of body frame like DC, a very uh, uh, low center of gravity, a guy like that on top of you is almost impossible to get off. You've got to be very, very skilled yourself to get him off. And DC just rolled him out. He just rolled him like a bloody horse. And he was just hitting him with those shots. Bing, bing, bing. Chipping away at him to the uh, to the head from behind. He had his back. And the shots were building momentum, getting more and more power. And it was only a matter of time before uh, Rumble's chin came up and allowed uh, DC to get his forearm under the neck. And um, 
Yeah, it was a shame. It was a shame. I, I was looking forward to seeing more. Congratulations to DC. Fantastic win. Did exactly what he needed to do. But, um, yeah, yeah, kind of a weird game plan from Anthony Johnson. It's like, look, did, did Anthony Johnson kind of kill his punching power by doing all that grappling early on? Well, exactly. You make a great point. So the thing is, everybody knew, well, everybody spoke about this going into the fight, that Rumble Johnson um, is a guy that's very dangerous in the first round and fades fast as the fight goes on. You know, he has, a, you know, people talk about a conditioning problem. DC said he's only going to last seven minutes. The most grueling aspect of mixed martial arts is trying to take your opponent to the floor, trying to out-wrestle him and take him down. I can kickbox all day long. Trying to wrestle people to the floor, that takes 100% maximum output. Everything you've got, every muscle in your body, tensing and toing and throwing and using all the technique you have, it's very hard. It is the most grueling aspect of MMA. And Rumble fucked himself. He fucked himself by doing that. He was trying to take down an Olympic caliber wrestler. By doing so, he was totally gassed. Second round came. He was a sitting duck. So not only was it a bad tactical error, it was bad in the term uh, from from the uh, the uh, perspective of conditioning. The game plan was, was terrible. It was just it, it it was baffling. It was confusing. Um, of Is course, that as why you said before. Team- he, after after Pardon after me? he got, after he had lost and he was announcing his retirement, is that why his team bailed on him? I read that somewhere. Yeah, I don't know why they bailed on they him. They were mad I mean, that, I he, that, that he grappled and he didn't stick to the game plan. Really, really, well, that's interesting. I mean, no, I can't see that. I mean, I don't know. I mean, as I said, we were in a restaurant and it was kind of hard watching it on an iPhone, uh, and we were talking about what was happening. Um, I can't imagine his team would abandon him in the octagon for doing that. You know, and if they did, shame on shame on them. You know, because things happen in a fight. You know, you can't go out there. Yes, well, it's like Mike Tyson famously said. You know, everybody has a game plan until you get punched in the face. Sometimes, once the fight happens, you're on autopilot. And, and, and it's the really good fighters that can stick to the game plan on autopilot. And then other times, you're just reacting to what's happening to you. You know, so it, I, I would assume his coaches, his teammates know him. You, you get a bond. You, you become like brothers. I can't imagine just because he didn't stick to a game plan, they abandoned him and left him in the octagon. Mm-hmm. This is uh, from audio. Yeah, this is a real deal. This isn't like bullshit. They left him because he abandoned the game plan and then retired. Whoa. W- what? Well, man. I mean, I'm shot. Listen, of course, you can be angry at your fighter. Yeah, I just got the link. Thank you. You can be angry at your fighter. You can be frustrated, all these things. But there are conversations that you have in the locker room afterwards or you go out to dinner afterwards and, and you be realistic and they say, you know, I mean, I've had losses and, and I've, I've I had to sit down to my coaches and say, you know, what do you think? And they've said, listen, you know, that sucked. That was bad. You did this wrong. You did that wrong. You shouldn't have done this. You did this good, but let's not sugarcoat it. You shouldn't have done that, this and the other. For his coaches to abandon him in the octagon, if that's what they did, and I know you've just sent me the article, but we are doing a podcast. I'll read it later. Um, if that's what they did, then I'm just going to throw it out there right now. Shame on them. You know, maybe, um, you know, they might not talk to me anymore. They might not train with me. Well, I don't fucking train with Henry Hooft anyway. If that's what they did, if they couldn't stick by their fighter after he's just gone out there to battle, then shame on fucking them. You know, they're just after the glory. They don't give a fuck about mm-hmm. Anthony Johnson. If, they, if, if that's what they did, because he wrestled, they, they didn't even stand with their fighter and walk him out and help him walk out of the octagon and, and make him feel better. It takes balls to go out there and fight. And whether you stick to a game plan or not, you should still get the respect of everybody involved, you know. Yeah. Um, so if, if that's the case, then I'm, I'm disgusted with his team, to be honest. Yeah, that's, uh, it's, very, it's very strange. The whole thing, the whole night, both the main and co-main... There are these weird things that have happened in both of these fights. Um, and what is going on? Why with is he Johnson? resting him? This is stupid. Why mm-hmm. is he? Fuck it, man. Just get off the cage. Get out of there. Why isn't he listening? He's tired already. I don't know why he's doing that. We have no expletive eyes. He has no fucking eyes. You're doing great. Don't fuck up. Don't wrestle him. Oh, man. He just keeps going on and on and on and on and on. Why the fuck does this happen every fucking time? Crazy. <clears throat> Wow. Yeah, I mean, I, but, but, but hold on. It doesn't say there that that was the reason that they left. I mean, that is a, a, a normal dialogue that cornermen will have to themselves. If their fighter is out there and they're losing and they're doing things that they shouldn't have done, you're entitled to have an opinion. 
So maybe if that isn't the reason why they walked off, then I apologize to his team for what I said. If they walked out there because he lost and didn't stick to the game plan, then yeah, I stand by my words. But there, as cornermen, you're allowed to have a dialogue to each other and say, Jesus, yeah, he's doing it again. <laughs> he's doing it again. The whole training camp, we told him not to do this. I guarantee the entire training camp, Rumble was not supposed to wrestle. You know, So of course they're going to be frustrated. But if they didn't have the, if they weren't man enough to stand there side by side with him, in victory or defeat, you're supposed to support your fighter. Simple as that. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's exactly what it's for. It's for the viewer. It's for the TV experience so that the viewer at home can hear what's happening in the corner. Um, I guess a way around that would just be to stick a microphone on a boom over the top of the corner. That would make things a lot easier. Uh, but no, I, I don't think that's an invasion of privacy. You know, it, it's all part of it. And, uh, you know, that, that, that's just the name of the game, Lewis. So, uh, all good. Why did Anthony Johnson retire? What is going on? What is this mystery job that he had? Hold on one second. Babe, put the dogs outside. Fucking dogs. I, we just came back from Vegas, and uh, the dogs have been in a kennel all weekend. Uh, a five-star kennel, uh, I might add. And they've just come in, and they're going psycho because I'm here. Uh, very, very distracted, so my apologies. Uh, why did Anthony Rumble Johnson retire? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, he said he got another job. Have you heard anything behind yeah, the scenes? Yeah, no, no, I haven't heard anything. I haven't heard any whispers, any rumors. I don't have a relationship with Rumble Johnson other than being a big fan and meeting him once or twice and shaking his hand and saying, you know, hey, how you doing? Um, I'm assuming he's got something um, lucrative in the pipeline. Dana referenced something last night that, you know, Rumble said something like that. But at the end of the day, and my son said to me last night, Callum, he said, why did Rumble retire? That doesn't make sense. And I argued with him. I said, well, it kind of does make sense. You know, I mean, everybody wants to be the world champion. And this is a very, very tough, unforgiving sport. People don't realize the fight is the easy part. The training and the lifestyle is the hard part. You know, I mean, I've said this a million times. You know, when you fight, you go out there, you get the, the applause of the crowd, or, or in my case, the booze. If I'm in America, uh, you get the applause. Or Australia. You get, the vic- you, you, you get the victory. You get you get the thrill of victory. You get the thrill of competing. You're competing in the sport that you've chosen in front of the world, on TV all over the place, in front of 20,000 people. At the end of it, you get a big fat check, you know, and, and it's great. It's awesome. You are a professional sportsman competing at the highest level, and that's great. On a random Tuesday morning when it's freezing cold outside and you go to the gym, and your body's aching from head to toe, and you're getting the shit kicked out of you. There's no applause, there's no crowd, there's no check, but you've got to do it time and after time and time again. You've got to keep repeating that process. And that's where champions are made in the training camp. That's what separates the men from the boys. And Anthony Johnson has had a fantastic career, and of course, he could stick around the UFC for a lot longer and continue fighting and continue beating people and knocking people out and putting on great performances. But he wants to be the champion, and he's failed at that twice. He lost to Cormier, and he lost to him again. And part of me respects that, respects the fact that he's willing to walk away. He respects the fact that he says, well, you know what? If I'm not going to be the best, if I'm not going to be the champion, then screw it. I tried. I put my heart and soul into it, and I couldn't do it. I respect a little piece of that, and he's smart enough to walk away while he's still got his brain cells, while he's still got you know, not too many injuries, and he's still young enough to pursue another career. So if that's the case and that's his choice, I say, well done, thank you for the knockouts, and best of luck in your future life. Wow, classy Michael Bisping. Well, what's, well, what do you want me to do? You can't give a guy shit for retiring. You surprise me sometimes. I don't know. Every once in a while, you surprise me. What am I going to say? <laughs> well, thank you very much. Um, also, he said that he is open to possibly returning one day if he can get John Jones at a heavyweight. He's been chasing that John Jones fight, obviously. That, um, yeah, that was that was I think a cool part of the fight as well. And uh, we got to get to the fan questions in just a few minutes. But I wanted yeah, that to get- was great at the end. I mean, it was a little WWE, but I thought it was awesome. I, I mean, I saw it in the restaurant last night. I could we didn't have audio, so I watched it this morning. And we DC. had DC, ba- DC basically holding it. court. Loved it, you know? dude. I actually became a fan. I like DC. I've always liked DC. I became a fan of DC as like a. a, a a personality type and a guy on the microphone. Yeah. He be he said, "Fuck it, dude, I'm gonna be a bad guy." And he grabbed the mic and he said, "Jimmy, you ain't ready for me, baby." And then he went to John Jones, like, "John Jones, shut up, man. That was two years, dude. It was great, really good." Yeah. No, 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 no. It, it was awesome. I thought uh, he 
He endeared himself to the public. Um, he handled it like a man. And he put them down. And it made for great TV. And, and whether or not they go with uh, Jimmy Manoa or John Jones, I mean, they got some great promo stuff there. So, uh, yeah, good stuff. It was